we all began with God. I have so many clients coming to me, and on their list of questions is always, where did I come from? But they always say, why am I here, too? Well, where did I come from? And I tell them we all came from the same place. No, I want to know what's my home, my home planet. There's no such thing. We all came from the same place. Other planets are just one of the schools that we sign on to learn at. But that's not home, not the real home. We all began at the same place. We all started with God, or what they call the source. Now, I've had many, many people go back to the source. They go back to when they were with God before they ever started on this long journey to become humans. Humans are kind of like the last part of the whole thing. This is the worst part, really. <laughs> but we all began at the same place, and I've had people go back and experience it, and they always describe God the same way. First, you have to get over the idea that God is a man. He's not a man. If anything, he would be a woman. <laughs> be because women are the creative power. But he's neither one. He's not male or female. There is no gender. And when people go back to be with God, they're just doing an work. Instead of going to past lives, this is what they do. They go back to the beginning. They always describe it the same way, that God is like a huge energy force. They describe it like a big bright light. Some of them say they are in the sun, but it's not hot. Other ones say the great central sun is what they call it, but it's a huge light. And when they're there, there's total love. They don't want to leave. They're all together. Everyone is together, and they all want to stay there. They don't want to leave. It is so much love. It is so much beauty. And when I've had people go back there, they say, don't wake me up. I want to stay here because it's so beautiful. And afterwards, they, the ones I work with, they always come through the people I work with, and they said oh, that the person who had the session, they wanted to get a taste of what it was like. It was one of their questions. They wanted to know what is God really like. They wanted a taste of home. But they said, we can just give her a taste. If we showed her what it was really like, she wouldn't want to return. But he gave her enough so that at least she'd have an idea of what it was like. It's so beautiful and so wonderful. They said, a human being cannot really understand the totality of God, of the source, is so enormous. They said, our belief in God and our concept of God is like a tiny thread compared to what it really is. We cannot understand the totality of it. Then they said, consider the other people out there who don't even have the metaphysical background. Their concept of God isn't even as big as a tiny thread. That's how hard it is to understand. But they said it's the glue that holds everything together. If it were to wink out for a fraction of a second, everything would disintegrate. That's how powerful this is. And I went into a lot of this in my books, the different versions of the dreamer dreams the dream, life is an illusion. <laughs> One concept I like to bring up that may shake you up a little this building, this room, didn't even exist until you collectively decided to be here today. Is that a little hard to understand? This is the kind of concepts I'm getting. It's the collective consciousness of how it creates. That when we decided to come here, we constructed this thing out of the energy, because everything is energy. And that's how it works. When we all began, we were all part of God. This beautiful light, this huge energy, total love, we all began there. And God decided he wanted to learn. He wanted to know. He was curious. So what happened? He burst out in all directions. It's called, come up and call it the Big Bang Theory. 
and I've had a lot of people argue with me about these things. I'm just, I'm the reporter. Remember the reporter, the investigator. I report what I get. It burst out in all directions, and when it did, all these tiny sparks flew out in all directions. Some of these sparks became galaxies. Some of them became universes. Many, many of them became your own individual soul. When I take people back in the sessions to find out what you really, really are, all they see is a tiny little spark of light. That's what your soul is, your spirit, a tiny little spark of light. And that's how you all began. This is, you are not a body. You have a body. This is just a suit of clothes, a costume you're wearing right now to play this part, this role in this stage play that you're involved in. It's, everything is an illusion. Nothing is real. I've had people go through the death experiences, and after they've died and they're on the spirit side, they look back at the life and they'll say, it was just a play. I can see all the actors on stage getting ready to come out and play their parts. I can see the actors in the wings getting ready to come on. And they said, but when I was there, it was so hard and so difficult. But now that I'm on the other side, it was like a blink of an eye. We get caught up in the illusion. So you are the producer, director, and actor in your own play. You're also the script writer. But the script is being written as it goes along. You know what that means? You can change the script anytime you want. You're the writer. You're the actor. If you don't like the way the scene is going, change it. This is how much power we have and we don't realize it. 